today we're out playing in my Porsche 993 and I thought I'd give you 10 reasons why I love the Porsche 993 I could give you more than 10, I could talk about it all day uh, as you probably know, I'm a Porsche enthusiast and I love my 993 um, but here is my, my top 10 reasons why I love the Porsche 993 and why I think you should buy one as well so let's get started so I hope it's not too windy here guys, you can hear me okay. So number one on the list is quite simply how the car looks. It looks all subjective, I understand that. Um, but I haven't never met anyone in my life who's ever said to me that the 993 looks ugly to them. Most people that I speak to about the 993 just talk about how beautiful it is. Uh, and I've got, to, I've got to agree, I think the 993 is a beautiful uh, 911. Possibly one of the best looking, again it's my opinion. But um, some people say the Porsche 964, the one that came before this, uh, is a more classic 911 silhouette. You know, the 964 that came before this has got the torpedo shaped front wings. These ones are a bit more smoothed out, a bit more like the, the Porsche 959, which this car has taken some design cues from uh, when it was designed in the late 80s. But um, where it lacks the front torpedo wings, it more than makes up for it, I think, with the, the curvy rear end. Um, it's got this lovely curvy profile, especially around the back. This is a C2 manual, narrow body, but it's still quite wide at the back, you can see. Um, they increased the track a little bit, they, they widened the track in these cars so they brought out the arches a wee bit to accommodate that. Um, still got the classic um, 911 silhouette shape, it's got the, the upright windscreen, it's got the fastback roof. Um, to me it's just a beautiful thing, you know, it's a beautiful looking car um, and it's it's one of these cars that you never actually get tired of how it looks. The more you look at it, the more you appreciate it and it just gets better as, 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 you, as you own the car as time goes on. I've got to say there's something about the shape and the look of this car. You, I just, you won't get bored looking at it, or I don't anyway. Um, they just nailed the design to me. So number one, absolutely how it looks. Number two on my list is the, the compact size of the car. Um, it's quite a small looking car nowadays when you compare it to modern cars. Most modern cars have, have grown, they've got bigger, they've got fatter, um, they've become safer, a bit more sanitised, a lot of the kind of uh, the, the safety's been engineered into them. Um, modern cars have become very big and bloated in comparison. Um, even the 11s I think, they're, they're, they're kind of a, they're verging on in my opinion, they're, they're verging on a kind of a wee bit, yeah, they're a bit too big in my, you know, again in my opinion. This car's at a compact size, it's, it's, it's quite small and compact, but it doesn't feel small inside. There's plenty of headroom inside. Um, it's just got perfect uh, d dimensions for a sports car, I think. You know, it's compact, but it's not small, it's big enough. Um, when you're sitting inside the car, it actually feels like a perfect size, like everything is just where it needs to be. Everything's within reach and it just feels right. Um, so although it's quite compact in size, and you know, I, I would say that they nailed the size perfectly for a sports car, it feels nimble enough, it's not too big, it's not too bloated like a lot of modern cars, so the size is a big plus uh, for me. Number three in my list, this may come across a wee bit strange guys, but it's actually the smell of the car. Yeah, it's getting a bit windy again, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, the smell of the interior and actually outside, you're, you're standing even as close as where I am right now, you can actually smell the car a wee bit. It's got a kind of leathery, oily, um, sort of distinctive sort of a vintage smell. It's characteristic of all air-cooled 911s, but from way back to 1964. Um, they've all got this kind of dead distinctive smell. You smell it really quite strongly in the interior, uh, but you can even smell it when you open the garage door. It's a dead distinctive smell, and um, although maybe it doesn't, doesn't sound very good, it's a, it's a really intoxicating, lovely smell. But as soon as you open the garage door and you smell that familiar old 911 smell, you just kind of go, oh, wow, you know, and you're, you're straight away, you start to get that wee feeling that you're going to be driving this car, and it's, it's a lovely feeling. So yeah, sounds a bit unusual, but the smell of the car, it's, it's, I just love the smell of the car. <laughs> Before, yeah, the, the interior layout, as you can see, everything just feels so functional. It's just perfectly placed in front of you. Loads of headroom here, even though it feels quite small and compact, it's, um, it's it doesn't feel too small inside. You know, I can touch this passenger door here where, where I'm sitting here. Loads of vis visibility, it's fantastic. You can see very clearly. Um, everything just feels great, just lovely and close to you. You know, not, not too much fuss, it's all understated here. Uh, whereas more modern Porsches have got this kind of large raised sensor console. This is kind of back to basics. Everything is just so back to basics and functional, just kind of so that you're more focused on the driving experience, you know. And I think that's, I just, I love that, that design. And again, sitting here you get that lovely familiar old 911 air-cooled smell. <sighs> 
magical. Number five on the list is how the car drives. It's um, it's very analog. It's very old school, if you like. It's very classic Porsche. You know, it's um, it's the kind of car that 50 miles an hour feels like 50 miles an hour, if you know what I mean. A lot of modern cars, 50 miles an hour doesn't feel like you're hard, hardly moving at all. But with this, it does. Um, it still feels very raw. It's a very raw drive. It's very involved. The, the control weights are all meaty and well engineered, you know, for a kind of engineering heft, I feel like. Um, the steering is spot on. I just had the suspension um, updated in this car, and the, the steering is it's really spot on. And there's a wee slight, you can, you can feel everything coming through the tyres. Um, you feel every wee bump, you feel every wee part of the road, the road surface. You get a lot of feedback through the steering wheel, you get a wee bit of chatter coming through the steering wheel. Um, it's power steering, but it's perfectly weighted. The the gear shift is just spot on, you know, it's very, it's very mechanical, it's very precise. It doesn't feel woolly or anything. Um, it just feels like the way it should do, you know. The accelerator response is, is, is pretty sharp as well. The drive is very unique. You know, this car has got a, an aluminium um, rear suspension subframe, and that was designed to kind of help dial out the oversteer, the snap oversteer that can happen in the earlier cars. So you don't you don't feel as though you're going to go flying backwards all the time through a hedge, but you do. You're, you're still aware of the, the the weight behind the car. You can feel it when you move around a wee bit. Um, but you can use that to your advantage with the added traction that I have for you. So the, the drive is very, um, the drive is, is very unique, I would say, to, to air-cooled 911s. It's smooth, it feels kinda, it feels kinda modern. You know, the suspension is such that it, it feels quite modern in a way. But don't mistake it, guys, this is very much a classic 911 drive. Six on the list is how this car is the last of the air-cooled 911s. I just I love how it's the last of the of the breed. You know, Porsches were, were air-cooled from the start, from the 356 onwards, um, until they went water-cooled with the transaxle Porsches back in the 70s and 80s. And obviously the 911 went water-cooled in the late 90s. But this is the last air-cooled 911, and it's got that kind of a slight um, that kind of slight prestige about it, for want of a better word. You know, it's just nice to think you've got the kind of the last kind of special edition of something. Um, when I say air cooled, it's obviously it's an air cooled and oil cooled engine. Um, Porsche went water cooled with the 996 that came after this car. But when, I see, when you see a, a, a Porsche's a 911 is air cooled, it also means a bit more than that. Um, it's also the, the type of um, the way that it was made and manufactured prior to becoming mainstream. These cars were mostly hand built, you know, and they, they were they were over engineered um, to to withstand the pressures of driving to, uh, around the racetrack. Um, so I love how this car is the last of the air cooled 911s. It's just it's got a, it's got a kind of romantic sound to it, I think, as well, being the being the last of a of a special breed. Number seven on the list is something that I think is very special with, with, with air cooled 911s, and this one especially being the last. Uh, it's a pinnacle of the air cooled development. Um, I just love how they're over engineered. You know, everything is over specified. These cars were de designed at a point in time where, where the engineers had the final say um, in the design. Um, nowadays, it's more it's more about accountants trying to save money. But back then, you know, these cars were were, were over engineered so much so that it actually co they, they cost Porsche a lot of money. They almost went bankrupt after making these cars because the parts were so well made and specified, and again, they were over engineered. And the whole ethos behind it was for Porsche's idea for the start about how you could drive a they wanted a car you can drive to the racetrack all day, thrash it around the racetrack, and drive it home again. Um, and this, these, these cars are more than capable of doing that. And I just I love that about them. I love how the engineers had the, the say rather than the, the accountants. And um, it was almost like um, you know, money wasn't factored as much as it in, as it is nowadays. Kind of to Porsche's detriment at the time, you might say. But we get a great product out of it. We get an over-engineered car, and it feels over-engineered. And everything that you do, everything that you touch, um, it just you know all the all the components, all the all the parts. Uh, and the way it drives, everything just feels heavy duty, and it's it's a it's a kind of a, you, it's an involved car to drive. You know, it's it's not something that's just you get in and, and just fly along the road like a modern car. It, it's it's 
like a, a very involved car to drive and it feels solid on the road. I also love the fact that it feels like it's got so much in reserve no matter how you drive it. You know, it's got power in reserve, it's got braking in reserve, handling in reserve. It almost, it can take everything you can throw at it and it's almost like it will just keep going. Um, it's, it's like more, more than capable of taking everything that you want to throw at it. So I just love that over-engineered um, power in reserve, everything in reserve, fuel to the, the Porsche 993. Number 8 on the list is the exhaust note. You know, it's got that lovely air-cooled kind of burble idle, you can hear it right now. And I'll just let you hear it a bit closer. almost kind of burble sound to it um, and it's a, it's a very distinctive air cooled uh, sort of motorsport sound it's very much Porsche uh, and even just idling like you can hear this now it's got a great sound to it but when you're actually driving it when you're, when you're taking it above four and a half thousand revs it changes the character of the, the engine note again and um, it's just it's, it's a really lovely raucous raw sound it's distinctly 911 and distinctly air cooled it feels sounds fantastic so the exhaust note is a big plus for me it's actually more the engine note than the exhaust note, but it all ties in together. It's just a lovely sounding uh, engine and exhaust. Number nine on my list is that it feels special. Just owning this car, it, it just feels special, you know. I've had this car for 10 years at this point in time, and it feels just as special as it did the day, as the day I bought it. In fact, it actually feels more special. There's something about the, just the, the joy of owning one of these things. Um, and it sounds a bit silly maybe, but even just looking at it sometimes and thinking that car's mine, uh, it just, it's a, it's a special kind of connection that, that gets under your skin, you know, like air-cooled 911s um, do get under your skin, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's just something about it. And for me, the 993 kind of becomes like a, almost like a family member, if you like. Uh, it's, it just feels special um, to, to, to own and to drive. It feels special to drive as well. Every single time you drive this car, or I drive this car, it, it's it's an event, you know. It's never boring. It's never dull. Even if I'm if I'm going somewhere and I have to get from A to B, it's just an experience, you know. It's just every single drive feels special, and the car's got a kind of character and soul that you kind of bond with and get on with, uh, and it almost becomes an extension of your personality. That sounds a bit dramatic, maybe, but you maybe need to, maybe you can relate if you've got one of these cars. Let me know what you think. Um, so yeah, the, the car just. It just looks and feels very special. Number 10 on the list is how kind of understated the car is. I love how it's so capable and has all this motoring heritage and you know victories in motorsport and all this. It's got all the credentials, all the history, all the prestige, you know, it's got all these things going for it and yet here it is, it's quite a simple, elegant and understated design. You know, it's not flashy. It's um, it's very much the opposite. You know, it's a kind of classic design where it's so under understated that it doesn't shout, "Look at me!" And um, despite its capabilities and despite all its qualities, it still doesn't shout, "Look at me!" And I, I love that about this car. Some people have said I read a I read a book recently, and a guy was saying that um, some the, the basic 993 maybe wasn't special enough for him because it was so understated. And I thought, to me that's one of the reasons why it is special, you know. Um, it doesn't have to shout about how good it is, because we already know that. And it's, it's just, it's conservative in its looks, I think, but it's still sim simply beautiful, um, I would say. So, yeah, it's got this kind of a conservative beauty that, an understated, that just appreciates over time. You know, the, the more you look at it, the more you drive it, the more you, you own these cars, the more you appreciate them and the more the more you the more you find to, to love about them. I've said in my post book that the 911 drip feeds you pleasure. You know, you don't get in straight away and you think, wow this is what it's all about, you know, and I get it. You don't often do that with 911s, no unless it's maybe a modern one but it's 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 a bit different. But these cars Porsche 911 is a drip feed you pleasure and the more you drive them, the more you come to appreciate them and the more you love them. Um, and I, 
actually throw in a bonus one. I mean, these cars have got the uh, number 11. <laughs> it wasn't on the list, but I just thought about it. These cars have got the wanted factor. You know, sometimes you just want something, you think, I want that car, I just I've got to have that car. Um, Porsche 993 I've got that in spades. It, it truly has. And uh, yeah, the wanted factor's off the scale with these cars, and it's no wonder. I mean, they're, they're, they're amazing machines. Guys, that just about wraps up the video. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, let me know if I've missed anything or if I've missed anything that you love about the Porsche 993 that I haven't mentioned. Um, and if you've enjoyed the video, give me a wee thumbs up and a like and subscribe please. And uh, maybe share the video with your friends or, or people who may be interested. I'm quite, I'm enjoying making these videos and I've had some good feedback from them. Um, I, like, I like inspiring and helping people um, to pursue their, their own dreams of Porsche, Porsche ownership. And obviously, as I always say, if you're interested in my own uh, uh, Porsche journey and my experiences, then by all means check out my Porsche books below, uh, in the comments below. I think you'll enjoy them. So, thanks for watching, and uh, until the next time, see you later.